Hello, Nebraska fans. Do we really need another 90s documentary movie or anything about the 90s football teams for that matter? That's what I'm going to talk about in today's video. There is a new movie coming out called Day by Day that's supposed to be coming out in theaters across Nebraska in May. And it's about the 90s teams that were so successful under Tom Osborne. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's true. You know, I first saw this, well, I think they first introduced it actually a couple of years ago, and then it went away with the pandemic. But I remember seeing it at the spring game. They showed a, a, a trailer on the, the big screen down in the north end zone. And when they popped it up, a guy to the left of me about 10 feet, 15 feet away said, which was my same initial reaction, it was, are we ever going to get past this whole 90s thing? And living in the past and bringing up the 90s and how great we were and talking about that all the time. And that was my first reaction. It really was. It's just like, oh, good God, do we really need this? And then, you know, I thought about it for a while because there was a long drive back from Nebraska to Minnesota where I live. And I thought, you know... Maybe this isn't such a bad thing. Maybe maybe if it comes out in theaters, their their website only shows that it's like a, a few theaters right now, which is kind of weird. I haven't seen a lot of marketing for it. Maybe it's not going to be that big a thing, but I'm guessing we'll find out soon. Back to my second reaction or my delayed reaction, which is usually more thoughtful. Um, I thought, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea if people go see this. I mean, there's a whole probably generation of people who have no idea what that era of Nebraska football was about. I'm sure that people talk to them enough about it that they're maybe sick of it. But I think one of the keys is to remember that that's who we are. And we don't have to stop being that just because we suck lately. Here's how that applies to right now. We're coming up on a 2022 football season. Scott Frost's fifth year of being the head football coach. The worst thing that Nebraska could do in 2022 is go 6-6 six and six and make a bowl game. Okay? I, I've seen these posts all over social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Uh, that 6-6 six and six would be improvement and people would be happy to go to a bowl game at this point. And to those people, I say bullshit. It wouldn't be improvement. It'd be us accepting crap. Um, it'd be us settling. You know, unless there's mitigating circumstances, which there always can be. But Nebraska's best scenario for 2022 would be to either go 3-9 and nine, again, or nine and three. And I mean, of course, best scenario is we go 12 and 0, but let's be realistic. I mean, if nothing else, I try to be that. But three and nine, you know, there's changes have to be made. And there's not really a discussion about that. At nine and three, there's clear progress and probably a chance that, that we win the Big Ten West and get into the Big Ten title game. And that's where we want to be, especially with this many years with the same guy as our head coach. So nine and three, that has a magical number in Nebraska's history because we've had two coaches fired who had nine and three records. You know, it was Frank Solich and Bo Pelini. And both were fired by athletic directors that, quite frankly, were morons. You know, Steve Peterson was a, a megalomaniac and uh, fired Frank Solich. And I think we could go over that, and people do bring that up all the time, as the place at which the decline in Nebraska football started. Uh, I'll just say this. Frank was doomed the moment he was named Tom's successor. And it wasn't because T Frank wasn't an adequate coach. It was because y y you're always doomed when you follow a legend. I mean... <laughs> Either Tom Osborne was the greatest coach and one of the greatest coaches in all of college football throughout its history, or he was just a guy that was a placeholder. I and mean, which one is it? He was one of the greatest coaches ever. So following that guy, you're doomed. All right. The moment Frank Solich went seven and seven, he was going to get fired. The problem was, the real problem was that Frank wasn't allowed to fail. If Frank went three and nine, and was fired, everybody would have gone, oh, yeah, okay, we get it. And the same thing with Bo Pelini, went nine and three, 
And he probably wouldn't have had a very good record the next year. I don't know if you go back. Bo Pelini's recruiting was kind of falling, and his you know his teams were getting blown out by good teams. But if Sean Eichhorst would have just had the patience to let him fail, we wouldn't have had a split fan base as heavily as we do now, constantly arguing over these two coaches who were fired with those records. And I, I think the key is, again, going back to the best case, worst case scenarios thing, is six and six is it's mediocre, it's average. Is it really improvement? You know what? Four and eight would be improvement. You're going to accept that? So it's not really improvement. Nine and three, I don't think we, you know, that would be improvement. Like I said, three and nine, go goodbye. And I get this. I get this. Listen, right now, the whole Scott Frost era at Nebraska has been pretty much a disaster. It really has. You could be objective about it. Um, you could put lipstick on that pig, but I think we ran out of lipstick last season, didn't we? And I know this is the time of year you're supposed to say good things about everybody, like we're playing eighth grade wrecked soccer or something. But the fact is, is Scott Frost has been a, it's pretty much been a disaster. And the reason he's around is there's a, just a strong desire for him to succeed. He's a Nebraska guy. And we want winning football. It's, it's important to the identity of Nebraska. You go back through history, right? Go back to that 90s. Tom Osborne, Nebraska guy, successful. National title winner, kicked ass. Bob Devaney, successful. National title winner, kicked ass. Right? Bo Pelini in there somewhere we kind of accept it as a Nebraska guy. Bill Callahan, no. Mike Riley, no. Right? We want Nebraska people. This is part of the identity of the state. I mean, you look at Nebraska and it's the epitome of flyover country. You got a long, flat interstate where people can drive to Iowa to Colorado to get to the mountains, and they can do 95 miles an hour, not legally, but they can, kind of, to get through the state as quickly as possible. You know, in other, other places talk about flyover country, they're literally talking about Nebraska and Kansas, but nobody goes to Kansas. Kansas even exist, right? So... What do you talk about if you talk about Nebraska's identity to the rest of the, the country? Not the world necessarily, but the country. What do you talk about? It's normally football. It's been really hard lately without people laughing at you, so people don't leave the state of Nebraska. But those people like me who live outside it are constantly broadened with, you suck and you stink and Scott Frost is an idiot and stuff like that. And it's not fun. What else could you have for an identity? Well, there's Nebraska beef. Not bad. Nebraska has the largest deposit of sand in the sand hills in the Western Hemisphere. Did you know that? Probably not. Interesting for geologists, I guess. Probably not much for everybody else. Probably would be something people made fun of us for. Home of Warren Buffett? Really rich guy? I don't know. Not really. Uh, farmers, so for some reason we hate farmers, even though they grow, grow the food that feeds the world, we think hicks and all that stuff, so we don't want that identity either, it seems. This is true for other states. You know, I've lived in Minnesota since 1987, and there's this constant one-of-us thing. It's not about football, but it, when it comes to, like, music or books or culture, it's kind of like, oh, Pop Dylan was one of us. It's, it is. New York City, everybody who lives outside in New York City, the people who are New Yorkers are idiots and morons, and why do they even walk the earth other than to provide them with food? Same thing goes for L.A., Texas. Do I need to mention their identity thing? And then there's one more I'll mention, and that's Oklahoma. And I have mentioned before on this site that I read a lot of college football history books, or I have, and one of the books I read mentioned Oklahoma. And Oklahoma got tired of having so much fun of them made for being Oklahoma that they hired Bud Wilkinson and decided that football would be their export. And I don't know if you know who Bud Wilkinson is, but he was one of the greatest coaches in college football history. 57-game win streak in the 1950s, national title or two. Uh, maybe we'll get to that later when I do some stuff about college football history. But when you think of Oklahoma, what do you think of? Red clay for me, dirt tracks I've been down to down there. But really, it's Oklahoma Sooner football, much to the chagrin of Oklahoma State. 
but it's it's not bad to have this as an export. But without it, what do you have? And you have the story of Scott Frost, the native Nebraska guy. And we want him to be successful. I want him to be successful. I'm tired of seeing us lose, especially after last season's most heinous losses ever, all, all, all season. I get the bias, and I get the identity crisis, and I get the, the strong desire for Scott Frost to succeed. But success is not 6-6 six and six and going to a bowl game. That's mediocrity. That's average. For the last, I don't, it hasn't been 20 years really, but for the last a very long time, we've heard from pundits all over the nation in every walks of whatever college football, radio, TV, writers, pundits, whatever. We've heard Nebraska will never be the 90s again. And, you know, maybe that's true. Maybe it is true. But that, that doesn't mean you just stop trying. It doesn't mean you don't aspire to those things. I think it does mean that there's a certain amount of restraint when it comes to firing a coach at nine and three again, but it doesn't mean that you just say, oh, well, it's six and six is improvement because it's not. And I'm going to keep saying that it's not improvement. All right. Tom Osborne went 60 and three over five years. That probably will never be equaled, but there's no reason that Nebraska can't be a successful football ball program, that Nebraska can't compete for Big Ten titles, that Nebraska can't win the Big Ten West consistently. There's no reason for any of those things. So can we go 60-3 and three over five years again? Highly doubtful. That doesn't mean we should quit trying. We're still Nebraska football. We're ninth in the total win column, right? Of all college football programs, we are ninth. We dropped below Penn State, who is eighth. 908 wins, 409 losses coming into the 2022 season. Five national titles. I'm sure people never get tired of hearing that. And that's five real national titles. Not all that made-up shit that Alabama does where they go back and look at records. And I, Because if we did that, we probably could claim some. But I think we're honest, straightforward, hardworking people. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll make a video later where I just claim some national titles because it seems to be the thing to do. So this day-by-day -day documentary that's coming out, I don't know. Maybe go see it. Maybe if, if it's streamed online or something, maybe it's not a ba bad idea to get a taste or just have something that allows you to remember that that's who we are. Not were, but that's still who we are. And we don't have to settle for stuff that's less. Hope you're all having a good time. If you made it this far, you know, I do plan on uh, making more videos. It's just my workload has been hell lately. And I'm, I thought I should really get better at editing, but I think honestly most of the videos are going to do are just like this, where I just talk at a camera because uh, I don't have time to do anything else. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is John Johnston with Coronation. Go Big Red.